The next question is from Abdul Karim from New York, USA. Is it permissible for a Muslim man to marry a Christian woman? If yes, are there any conditions? Can he marry her even if she believes Jesus, peace be upon him, to be God? This is a very important question asked by Brother Abdul Karim from New York, USA. That is it permissible for a Muslim man to marry a Christian girl or a girl from the Ali Kitab? Are there any conditions? Can he marry her if she believes Jesus is God? As far as a Muslim man marrying a Christian girl is concerned, Allah clearly mentioned in the glorious Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 5, that lawful for you are those things that are good and pure. Lawful for you are the food of the Ahle Kitab. And lawful for you in marriage are the chaste believing woman, the Mohsenat, the chaste believing woman and the chaste woman among the Ahle Kitab. So based on this verse of the Quran, the Quran is very clear cut and it says that a Muslim man can marry a chaste woman from the Ahle Kitab. There are some people who say, okay, the Ahle Kitab at the time of the Prophet, they did not believe that Jesus was God, etc. These people who say this, they are wrong. They don't know the Quran clearly mentions that the Ahle Kitab, the Christians used to do kuf in Surah Maida chapter 5 verse number 72 that they believe that Jesus is God they did kufr by saying they believed in Trinity in Surah Maida chapter 5 verse number 73 and I'll come to it later on but the majority of the scholars all of them they say that it is permissible to marry as long as she is chaste there's a criteria there's a condition put on that which woman from the Ali Kitab can you marry and the Quran in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 5, is very explicit and says that you can marry the chaste woman from the moment, from the believers. Mohsenat from the Mominat. And Mohsenat from the Ahle Kitab. The condition is that she should be chaste. Now, based on this condition, the least you can expect a chaste woman to be least. There are various conditions for being chaste. Or being more senat, the minimum, the minimum condition, the lowest is that she should be a virgin. And today we find, since the question is asked from USA, from New York, today we know according to the statistics that we have of the Western countries, they say that the girls in the school 90% lose their virginity. Other strategies say that the girl, by the time she passes college or university, 95% lose their virginity. Some say 98%, even if you know the statistics of Europe, of UK. Most of the statistics, almost all, they say that by the time a woman passes her university, some say 95% lose their virginity, some say 96, some say 97. But all of them agree it is more than 95%. So, one of the minimum criteria for Mohsenath for being chaste is that you should be virgin. There are many other criteria. So, based on this, hardly you will find any woman, especially in the western country, who will be chaste. And I was born in Bombay, I lived my life in Bombay, I passed my medical college in Bombay. And I remember that after I passed my medical college, in the early part of the 21st century, in the year 2002 or 2001, there was an AIDS conference in Bombay. And according to the statistics in that conference, we were told that in Bombay, on an average, 70% of the girls lose their virginity before they pass standard 10. And it was shocking to me. Bombay, uh, India is much more conservative than America, than the Western country. And that is talking about 20 years back. So today what we come to know that in this 21st century, it is very difficult for a woman to remain chaste, especially in the Western countries. And now it's also coming to the Eastern countries. 
and the scholars, most of them they discourage. Though it's permissible, but they say they should be chaste. So where will you find a chaste woman from the Hale Kitab, a chaste Christian woman? And even if you marry, the problem that we see after that is phenomenal. There are high chances that after a Muslim man marries a Christian girl or a Jewish girl, there are high chances that the marriage will not be successful. And we find that the way of dressing differs, the way of eating differs, the way of behavior differs. And imagine the cleanliness is not there. Imagine the Christian woman during menstruation, she may not inform the husband. And we know it's haram to have an intercall during the cycle. Whether will she be able to clean herself very well? The eating habits are different. And in Western world, it is quite common that many of the Muslim men, they marry Christian women. And these men actually are not very practicing Muslims. So what we find them doing, that after they marry, when they go to the grocery, they are buying alcohol for their wife, they are buying pork for their wife. They may not drink themselves, but they are buying it for their wife. Many of them, maybe they were drinking before marriage, Many of them not drinking, start drinking alcohol after marriage. All these things are common. And we find that many a times if the marriage doesn't work, it ends in a divorce. And when there's a divorce, and if you have children, then you are Muhammad, and you are Abdullah, and you are Abdul Rahman, and you are Fatima, and you are Khatija, they are going to church. So, I personally, I'll give my view later on the additional criteria. Most of the scholars, they do not encourage a Muslim man to marry a woman from the Ahle Kitab. It's permissible, but the criteria is she should be Mohsena. And where will you find a Mohsena? And even if you find a Mohsena, there are yet problems. So person who is a religious Muslim will never venture into this. And most of the cases that you have, when a Muslim man is marrying a Christian girl, 99.9 .9 cases are love marriages. The moment you have girlfriend and boyfriend, it means that you are not chaste. So what do you do? You go out with a girl, go for a movie, go out for eating, go out for dancing. Where is she chaste? Leave aside virginity. Even going out for dancing with an amaram, going out to see a movie, it is against the value of chastity. He is not a Mohsena. So, if you apply the strict criteria of a Christian woman with Mohsena, hardly you will be able to find. And practically to follow this advice today in this 21st century is very difficult. And we know the problem that can happen after marriage. According to the call of Ibn Abbas, May Allah be pleased with him. He says that a Muslim man can only marry an Ahle Kitab woman in an Islamic state. He cannot marry a Christian woman or a Jewish woman if it is in a foreign country. And there are a group of scholars who agree with this view of Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him. And even I agree with this view. Because if you marry a Christian girl, in a non-Muslim country and if anything happens they will follow their law they will not follow the Islamic law if there is a divorce then your children as I mentioned Muhammad, Sultan, Abdullah, Khatija, Fatma will go to church so but natural it is not encouraged at all so I agree with the view of Ibn Abbas may Allah be pleased with him that this is only permissible to marry a Christian woman Number one should be chaste and number two in an Islamic state. Besides agreeing with the view of Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, I personally have another condition based on my studies of the Quran. I don't claim to be a scholar, I'm a student of knowledge and my speciality is Islam and comparative religion. So I have 
my additional criteria based on the Quran. It's not my criteria, it's my study of the Quran. As I mentioned earlier in the starting of my answer, Allah is very clear cut in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 5. Lawful for you are all things that are good and pure. Lawful for you are the food of the Ahle Kitab, of the people of the book. And the verse continues, lawful for you in marriage, besides the chaste women who are believers, are the chaste women from the Ahle Kitab. This verse is there. But there is another verse in the glorious Quran. In Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 221, which says that do not marry an unbelieving woman. Do not marry a mushrika, an idolatress, a woman who does shirk, unless she believes. A believing woman who is a slave woman is much better than an unbelieving woman, than a mushrika, even if she allows you. That means the Quran is very clear cut in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 221, that a Muslim can only marry a woman. A Muslim cannot marry a mushrika, cannot marry a non Muslim, unless she becomes a Muslim. A Muslim woman who is a slave woman, a bond woman, is much better than a mushrika. An unbelieving woman, even if she allows you, she may be the richest woman in the world, she may be the most beautiful woman in the world, she may be very attractive but a believing woman who is a slave woman who is a bond woman is much better for a Muslim man than an unbelieving woman a non-Muslim woman it's very clear cut a mushrika that means you cannot marry a Hindu but there's exception in the Quran in Surah Maida chapter number 5 verse number 5 that you can marry a chaste woman from the Ali Kitab Quran is very explicit in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 72, where it says that Lakat kafra lazina kalu in Allah hu al Masyub numarema. They are doing kufr. They are blaspheming those who say that Allah is Christ, the son of Mary. That means Quran is very clear cut in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 72, that the Christians they say that Allah is Christ the son of Mary and the verse continues they blaspheme those who say that Allah is Jesus Christ the son of Mary but said Christ Ya Bani Israel O children of Israel O Budullah worship Allah Rabbi wa Rabbakum who is my Lord and your Lord Inna huma ishrik billah Anyone who associates partners with Allah, فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ لِيَ الْجَنَّةِ Allah will make Jannat haram for him. وَمَا وَهُ النَّارِ وَمَا لِلْظَالِمِ مِنْ أَنْسَارِ And fire shall be dwelling place and he shall have no helpers in the hereafter. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran is very clear cut and he says that they are doing kuf, they are blaspheming those who say that Allah is Christ the son of Mary. But said Christ, Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, Abdullah, worship Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbakum, who is my Lord and your Lord. Inna ma ishrik billah. Anyone who associates partners with Allah, fakad haram Allah lil jannah. Allah will make jannah haram for him. Wama wahun nar, wama resolve mil min ansar. And fire shall be dwelling place, and he shall have no helpers in the hereafter. So this was the message of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, which is conveyed in the glorious Quran. But Allah also says that these Christians they say that Allah is Jesus the Son. Of Mary. No spell. Allah further says in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 73. Kalu in Allah They are doing kufr. They are blaspheming those who say that Allah is three in one. Allah is Trinity. So here the Quran says that Christians are doing kufr by saying Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, the Almighty God. They believe in Trinity. Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse number 221 says you cannot marry someone who does shirk. Surah Maida chapter 5 verse number 5 says you can marry chaste women from the Heli Kitab. So all these verses put together they seem to be an apparent contradiction. If Allah is very clear cut in the Quran that the Heli Kitab they do shirk and the Quran says a woman cannot marry a mushrika 
So how come Surah Maida says that you can marry Ahle Kitab? There seems to be a contradiction. And Allah is very clear cut in the Quran. In Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 82. Afala yazabburun al-Quran. Wallahu qana min in the garera. Lawjudu fiqh talafan kasira. Do they not consider the Quran with care? Do they not ponder over the Quran with care? Had it been from anyone besides Allah, there have been many contradictions. So there cannot be a contradiction. So Alhamdulillah, since I'm in the field of comparative religion, there is one verse of the Quran which gives the reply to this question. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 110, which is a very famous verse. Allah says, Kuntum khaira ummatin nas. O ye Muslims, ye are the best of peoples evolved for mankind. Because we enjoin what is good and we forbid what is wrong and believe in Allah. So this verse of the Quran is a very important verse saying that the Muslim Ummah is the best of the people evolved for mankind. And the reason is because we enjoin what is good and we forbid what is wrong and we believe in Allah. This is a very famous verse but this is not the complete verse. This is half the verse. The verse continues. It would have been better for them if the Ahle Kitab had faith. It would have been better for them if the Ahle Kitab had faith, had belief. Among them, there are some who are believers, but the majority are perverted transgressors. So here in Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse 110, Allah says that among the Ahle Kitab, there are some who are Mumin. But the majority are poverty transgressors. So the one criteria which all the scholars agree is that the woman from the Ahle Kitab should be Mohsinat. And there's no doubt about it. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, puts another criteria that the marriage should only be done in a Muslim state. Otherwise not valid. I say according to... To Surah Imran, chapter number 3, verse 110. Among the Ahle Kitab, there are some who are Mumin. That means they are believers. That means they don't believe that Jesus is God. They don't believe in Trinity. So you can only marry the Mohsenat Ahle Kitab. The chaste Ahle Kitab who are Mumin. It will not contradict against the verse of the Quran of Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 221. So according to me, in my humble study, I don't claim to be a scholar. The additional criteria besides the woman being chaste and besides it being in an Islamic state, the third criteria is she should be a woman. That means she should not believe that Jesus is God. She should not believe in Trinity. And at the time of the Prophet, there were such people. The example is Warqa bin Nawfil, who was the cousin of Hazrat Khadija, may Allah be pleased with her. And he was a woman. He was a Christian, but he was a Mormon. That is the reason you find that there are very few Sahabas. It's permissible. I'm not saying it's haram, but there are criteria that Ahle Kitab woman, the Krishna Jewish woman, should be Mohsenat, should be chaste, should be in an Islamic state, and should be Mormon. She should not do shirk. That is the reason. There are very few Sahabas, I think. Hudayfa, may Allah be pleased with him. Salah ibn Ubaidullah, may Allah be pleased with him. Very few Sahaba who had wives from the Ahli Kitab. But my advice to the Muslims, especially in the Western countries, is that don't take undue advantage of this verse and think that it's fine. This verse is very explicit that she should be a Mohsin, a chaste woman. To get chaste woman is extremely difficult. And if you apply the condition of Ibn Abbas, that it should be a Muslim state, but natural. The question is from New York, is from Western country. I would totally disagree that a Muslim man should marry a woman from the Hale Kitab, especially in the Western country. Even if it's an Islamic country, she should be a Mosina and she should be a believer, she should be a Mormon. And what we find that most of these marriages are love marriages. How can she be Mosina? Okay, if you find a woman who was a Christian woman who accepted Islam because she liked Islam, no problem. Someone who accepts Islam and she's a revert and then you marry, no problem. But you get into love with her, you go to college together or you go 
to a university together or you're working together and then you fall in love and then you say that Islam allows and then you may go to a Qadi and maybe say the Shahada for namesake, this is only plastic surgery. There are high chances that your children, your Muhammad, your Abdullah, your Fatima, your Khadija will go to church. I totally disagree. And these type Muslims are not practicing Muslims. A practicing Muslim actually would not fall in love with a Christian girl. So but natural because your deen is weak and then you take an excuse from the verse of the Quran and marry. I am not making permissible haram. I am saying there are conditions and it is very difficult, very very difficult to find such thing. So my advice to the Muslim young men and young boys is that please don't use this verse of the Quran as an excuse to marry the Christian woman. There are various conditions. It's almost very difficult to fulfill these conditions and doing in a non-Muslim country also is not permitted according to many scholars and agree with that. And these are only infatuations. You are living in a Western country, you go to work, you go to school. So these things we should be away from. If you really find a revered girl who has accepted Islam not because you have fallen in love and she's following the principles of Islam and she's praying five times a day and is a good modest woman, then there's no problem, but please don't get involved in love and then you say it is allowed in Islam. Please stay away from it. It will be not only bad for you, but for the generations to come. Hope that answers the question.